Maybe you're currently feeling like you're in a slump in life. You feel like you need to change. Sometimes you might feel like you actually don't like yourself. Man, I've been there. I've been in all of them. I was born a shy, empathic, dreaming, introverted kid. But when I was kicked out of the nest at the age of 16, I had to quickly reinvent myself, not only to survive, but to thrive. And this technique that I'm about to share with you today not only saved me many times, but it is so much fun. It is super simple and it works every single time. So I kept doing it. And today I'm going to share it with you. Now understand that the reality that you live in right now, as you're watching this video, is a direct mirror to your self identity. And you are never going to be able to ask the guy out, ask for the promotion, get more paychecks, and all that sort of stuff if you are living as yourself. Now, we don't have anything against yourself. I'm sure you're a beautiful creature. However, if you want to get all of these things, you have to start doing things differently. So by the end of this video, you will find out why you are the way that you are today, how stories shaped your life, and how you can use stories and myths to easily reinvent yourself. Now, you can skip to the part of the video in which we talk about the practicality and the step-by-step -step of how you can reinvent yourself. However, I would highly suggest that in order for you to fully understand what I'm talking about, you actually stick with me and let's talk about myths. Throughout history, myths have been more than just stories. They've been powerful tools for transformation. For centuries, they even had power to heal us, such as the story of Christ or Mother Aset and they help us to tap into a new personality, reinventing ourselves. The hero's journey, which is a term popularized by Joseph Campbell, is an archetypical story that we can find in many myths. And it's a story that talks about the main hero and their personal transformation as they have to leave the ordinary world, face the trials, so that they can transform themselves, find the elixir and become their true self. In our modern day culture, you will see that the hero's journey is replicated over and over in best-selling literature and the best movies because it actually mirrors the development of our soul and what we humans go through, our personal trials and our personal victories. Myths are a part of the collective psyche and the unconscious. Within this dark, vast pool of unconscious lives a myriad of worlds and characters. But for the most important part, it is the realm of the archetypes. You might have heard about archetypes before, such as the sage, the queen, the priestess, the huntress, the lover, or you might have heard about them from a perspective of marketing, which is very popular, which could be the creator, the magician, the innocent, the rebel and so on and so on by the way if you want to know what is your primary archetype then you can click the link down below and follow my five minute quiz and you can find out what archetype you actually embody right now what are your pain points what are your strengths and on top of that you will see what myths and heroes connect with that archetype which is exactly where i'm aiming an archetype is a symbolic representation of a set of traits, values, and behaviors that embody a particular role or ideal. Have you ever wondered why as a child you naturally gravitated towards certain stories? When my teacher brought a book of Greek myths to school, every girl chose Aphrodite. The smart ones picked Athena, but I liked Persephone. I didn't know why at the time. But years later, living alone in Prague at 16, in my own underworld, I understood. I've always felt a deep connection with the myth of Persephone, cycling between darkness and light, much like my life. By the way, let me know if there is a particular story that you always felt drawn to. I am really curious. Basically, we live the stories of the gods and in Hinduism, we can actually call this Leela, which is called the divine play. So in a way you can say the same thing and you can even question if we actually are the puppets of the gods playing us. For me personally, I like to think about it more in the sense of the soul wanting to reveal itself through the power of imagination. Like we humans have such beautiful, powerful imagination and the stories that we write reflect what is happening with us collectively and on an individual level. And 
The most important part and the most practical part of this is that if you understand that your life, your life story is closely interlinked with the myths, then you can understand if you are currently going through a slump that it might just be a phase and then there will be another phase. But going back to reinvention. There's a big chance you already heard about the term identity shifting. Oftentimes we talk about creating an alter ego. We like to liken it to superheroes, which I like very much because if you think about it, they're actually gods and their alter ego is the human. <laughs> yeah, it's great. In Joe Dispenza's book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, he talks about how neurons in your brain connect and create pathways to shape your reality and how you can disconnect them and reconnect them to create a different story. Identity shifting is very popular also between athletes, like Kobe Bryant used to think of himself as the black mamba, the snake, and he studied its movements to implement them into his play. Similarly, you can identify the right archetype for you to work with to unstuck yourself. And here's why this technique is so amazing. Number one, these archetypes are already embedded in your psyche because they are a part of something that is called the collective psyche. And so it will be much easier for you to actually tap into their energy. And second, because they already are an archetype that is established and you can easily tap into that energy, you don't have to spend so much time trying to craft your alter ego from the beginning. So let's go to the step-by-step -step practice of how you can reinvent yourself in a very fun way using the power of myths and archetypes. I highly suggest that you take pen and paper because this process will require some of your input. By the way, along this process, you might find out that you have a resistance to even identify what you want, identify your core beliefs. And if that is the case, that means that your shadow is really working against you. So if that is the case, then I highly suggest that you go to my sacred scribe because this week I am talking about unlocking the potential of your shadow so that you can become the person that you are destined to be. Your shadow actually holds a lot of potential, but the problem is for the most part, we are not looking there. Number one, journaling. Identify what archetypes and myths resonate with you. Look at the divine pantheon within ancient Greece, India, ancient Egypt, even modern day figures. So here's the thing, if you love your mom for the way she handles life, she can be your archetype. If you love Princess Diana, Oprah or Malala for how they do so much good for humanity, then they can be your archetype. Anyone can actually become an archetype. Number two, research the archetypes. Now you have to identify what traits you actually like about the archetypes that you picked. What traits would benefit you on your journey right now at this very moment? For example, if you are feeling shy, but you secretly want a partner, then you might work with archetypes such as Freya or Ishtar. Number three, narrow down your choices. So after you selected few archetypes, you should narrow them down. Now you can select more than one archetype because you might have certain areas in your life where that archetype is going to be ideal to apply. But for me personally, I like to work with one archetype because I like to have one primary focus in my life at the moment, or I have a primary archetype in general, which for me right now for years has been, for example, mother or set. Number four, identify core beliefs write down at least 10 core beliefs of each archetype let's say you chose aphrodite so you can write i am beautiful i have fun in life i take things easy because i know everything happens for me naturally i trust myself i love my body i value myself and the world can see it i am playful with life and people i am authentic if you pick Mars, you would say, I overcome any obstacle. I am strong body and mind. I invite challenge and come out stronger. Now keep this paper close to yourself and read it every single day because how you think about yourself is how you show up. And the most important part, because it's not enough to just say affirmations. It's also about embodying the new personality, the new identity. That means that you have to start doing things differently. 
I'll make it a fun exercise and go even deeper, imagining how they would introduce themselves for the first time, how they lead a conversation, how they are not afraid to say no. In short, you should identify how they speak, how they carry themselves, how they dress up, how they respond to challenges, how they respond if someone crosses their boundary, the level of their openness with the world, how they take care of themselves, if you think about it, our entire identity is based on who we copied in school because they were popular, in our parents, in our friends, and our idols. Adapt to your new habits. So write down also how their day looks like and what are their daily habits. When you start following the step-by-step, -step, the habits, you will get out of your own way. Just try to think about it for the fun sake of it, that you are just an actor. You're trying to live somebody else's life. It's not that you are not good enough, obviously not. It's just that you're trying new ways, new ways to live, new ways to think, new ways to think about yourself. In my case, I actually like to pick the archetype and then just embody it fully. Like I feel it in every cell of my bone. Like I am becoming that person. Number six, begin the shift. Understand that this will not happen overnight, but by you deciding the shift, it's already in the process. In 90 days, if you manage to be consistent with how you respond to life, how you see yourself as though you were this person, how you follow the habits, you will embody this archetype.